Hello and welcome to the Happy Author Podcast with me, Dorothy Coombson. I'm a multi-award winning best-selling author and I'm here to help demystify the publishing world for anyone who writes books, wants to write books or just has a love and passion for books. On today's podcast, I speak to marketing director Joe Lydiard. Joe has worked at Headline for many years and has most recently been working with me on my novel All My Lies Are True. Jo explains that marketing isn't simply advertising and how she works with authors to try to get books into the hands of as many people as possible. I hope you find our chat as fascinating as I did. Welcome Jo Lydiard. That's how you say your name, isn't it? Lydiard. It is. Lydiard, yeah. Lydiard, okay. And can you tell me what your job title is? So my job title is Head of Marketing, which I think is just a kind of indication of the level of campaigns that I work on um, in terms of how big a book they are um, and the kind of it sounds awful to use the word hierarchy but there has to be some kind of hierarchy kind of in the department in terms of what relationships we're managing both with authors but also with our retail customers and with kind of other divisions to kind of have a kind of parity to be in a very civil service I'm married to a civil servant so it's all about grades so kind of thinking about the grade that you're at and the level that you're at. Okay, so um, you're head of marketing for? I'm head of marketing for all of Headline, be it Headline itself, Headline Review, Headline Home, Wildfire, Tinder Press, Headline Eternal, but just that kind of division of Hachette. I wouldn't do anything with Quercus or Little Brown or Orion. or Because just to explain to people, Hachette is the huge parent company and yeah. they have lots of imprints in there. And divisions within. Divisions, yeah. yeah. And so they're called divisions. I just call them imprints because of how yeah. I came into publishing. But sort of lots of different divisions. So there are almost like little companies that are inside. Yeah, within a bigger, wider parent. Yeah. Exactly. And you, um, Headline, I'm published by Headline um, currently and you work for headlines for that little company almost inside the company exactly so you're head of marketing for headline headline books but nothing else outside of that nothing outside of that no yeah so how did you get to work for headline and how long have you been doing the job so I have been at headline quite scarily for 15 years which sounds crazy but has flown by Um, So I joined originally as marketing manager in autumn 2005 um, and then have been promoted within to my current role. Um, Ahead of that, I spent four years at what is now Penguin Random House, but at the time was just Random House. um, And I worked for the Cornerstone division, which is a very commercial division. Yeah, that's where that's where my other books were published. Uh, when I, when I was invisible, Brighton Mermaid, that girl from nowhere, and um, the friend. They that's why where I was published before. Yeah. That was yes, but I didn't know you then. I didn't know no, you at all. Well, I worked I worked for Cornerstone two thousand and one to two thousand and five. Oh, so that's so well I, before my time. Yes, yes, is when I yes. worked at Cornerstone. So I joined as marketing assistant in September two thousand and one. Um, and ahead of that, I had done a publishing master's at City University. And while I was doing that, I also worked at Bookscan at the same time. So why did you decide to work in publishing? I think I wanted to work in publishing because of how much I loved books and I wanted to bring more books into the world. I think before I did my publishing master's, I didn't kind of understand the different areas that you could do in publishing it was very much that kind of classic Bridget Jones impression that it was just editorial and there was no other kind of functions around that that are so needed to get books out into the world so actually doing my master's really opened my eyes to that cemented by the fact that we had to do a month's worth of work experience as part of that master's so I had experience working across sales, publicity, marketing, editorial. And I think that's when I really decided, actually, I didn't want to work in editorial at all. I wanted to work on the other side. 
um, where you could still be just as creative, but have so much collaboration with other departments and be really involved in the process. Um, so I was lucky enough, actually. And I knew, I think that really honed my view as well, that I wanted to be, again, there's so many different areas of publishing. It isn't stuff very commercial area I'm in but there is education there is trade there is legal there is I mean there's wide wide scope actually knowing through and through that I wanted to be in commercial very commercial fiction and very commercial non-fiction um so I was lucky enough to apply for the job as marketing assistant that I then got at Cornerstone and kind of progressed from there which authors do you work on at the moment apart from me so we have I've known you for a while since I came to Headline from Cornerstone, ironically, but we didn't work together on my first book at Headline, which was Tell Me Your Secret. We've been working on All My Lies Are True, true. which is the sequel to The Ice Cream Girls, which came out in hardback um, in July 2020. So we've worked very closely on that, and we're going to talk about that in a minute, but who else do you kind of work on? A lot of brand authors I work on um, and I love doing that because you work so closely with someone and you build up that relationship and it's not picking something up, dropping it off, it's a long-term thing in all aspects and that's what I really love. I mean I, I do enjoy non-fiction as well, I, um, I think I mostly work on fiction but I do obviously do yeah. non-fiction as well. It's in, I mean it's brilliant, I am very lucky and I can truthfully say that I love my job. You just said um, a thing about brand authors. Um, do you want to explain what a brand author is? How would you describe a brand author? I would say write books on a regular basis so that their um, readers know they are likely to get a new book from them every year or in some cases, you know, what every six months or every two years. But it's very much that expectation, you know. I think in terms of brands, there's also kind of, an internal publishing kind of thing of an expectation of that sort of level and what the campaign expectation is and the amount of time it will take a person to manage what's needed in terms of looking after that author because there's so much involved in everything that needs to be done in every channel both in terms of talking to retailers and talking to consumers and kind of talking internally to make sure that as much as possible is being done for those authors. So when you say brand, it sounds, I mean, it sounds quite, um, it sounds quite clinical and people don't like to think of that sort of thing when they talk about books. They always think, want to think of books as pure and art, but really it is a commercial thing. So you, you kind of, an author has a brand that they become known for that type of book and is that right? I think that kind of book, that kind of expectation, that kind of knowing what that author is going to deliver. And it's not to say that authors can't change, but it's managing everything to do with that author to make sure it's kind of consistently on message as well from being what the covers look like. Are they delivering what they need to do? At? We are just as involved in those cover conversations, making sure that it kind of tallies up with what we need in terms of campaign messaging. Um, making sure that authors are doing or what they're happy to do, helping out with their social media, talking about websites, as well as advertising at kind of all levels. And I think the other thing with the brand author expectation is it's not just front list. And again, I'm going to have to explain what front list and back list. Yes, because I was about to say, because because I am what you would consider a brand author yes. in that I write a book, books regularly and my books have a certain look. And when I moved over to Headline, we kind of gathered together most of the backlist. So because I've got 16 books, it was a lot of the, the other 12, we kind of gathered yeah. together and then, or sorry, 10, um, I can't do maths. Um, we gathered them together and then we went through and started re-jacketing them. For those authors whose titles we do have that are old versus new it's thinking what we can do with those but we haven't just forgotten about those 10 books we're still working to try and sell those 10 books as well it's just not forgetting anything when you're talking about a brand author um like my good self do you have meetings that um this is i, I need to say <laughs> this do you have meetings they go right we're going to talk about dorothy coobson 
and not me personally because I'm lovely and you wouldn't want to say anything awful about me but I mean you would talk about the Dorothy Coopson brand and the books and what the logo looks like and what um what sort of books they're going to write next yeah. and what sort of titles and what if there's one that doesn't say there was two or three that didn't look like the others would there be a moment to re-jacket those three and would it be a completely new jacket look or would it just be tweaking what we've got and maybe changing the type or changing the colour? Um, and then once we've got them all together, do we promote them all together? Or are there two or three maybe that, you know, we'd pull out that are relevant to promote the next book? So obviously with All My Lies Are True, we did a lot around re-promoting the ice cream girls in the run up to first publishing that, both to get people to rediscover their old copies but also for people who hadn't necessarily read the ice cream girls before fools because as you know Dorothy it is my favorite <laughs> um but and it's kind of getting them and I think that's the case as well are there ones obviously not just for that author's new book but for all of their books and all of their work and how can it what is it the best thing to do at any one moment and marketing are very much involved in that conversation as much as sales and editorial and publicity and production because with all of this we need to make sure that there are ebooks or there are actual copies of books on the shelf it's very much a team process and not just the editor sitting in their office and clicking their fingers and this stuff miraculously happens it's everyone pulling together making sure that the best possible thing can happen for all of that author's work not just the brand new book. How would you work on a campaign? So, for example, we've got All My Lies Are True. We, you've kind of wanting people to read the old book, The Ice Cream Girls. And um, so when you were told that you were working on um, All My Lies Are True, my next book, apart from jumping the air going, <laughs> yes, fantastic. What did you kind of start to do then? What was your first process about? I'm basically trying to get an idea for people who are listening of what working on a campaign for a book actually means, because that's what you call a book where you work on a book, a campaign. So what you what you actually go through, what you sort of start thinking about. What we go through. I think we think about what, I mean, there's different things in terms of format and actually All My Lives Are True is quite an interesting case in point by being that sequel, because I think what, when we were publishing the hardback, we were very much focused on um it being the sequel to the ice cream girls because actually a hardback is a more costly product it, you are asking people to invest quite a lot both in terms of money and time in terms of what they're reading so actually we knew that the likelihood of those people reading all my lies are true were going to be existing fans of yours um and existing readers so it wasn't going to be a case of kind of selling it on the book on its own it was very much honing in you love the ice cream girls you absolutely have to read this as a sequel so we were very much in terms of planning that campaign how do we talk to your fans be it through your channels be it through targeted kind of keyword advertising that we'd pull out digitally um be it how we spoke to retailers about that book and which retailers we partnered with um so we decided quite early um lockdown and everything covid related allowing um to partner particularly with roundtable books who have been amazing um and big supporters and they agreed to give us a window and allow us to manage a signed copy process for your kind of core fans who were going to want the sequel sequel to the ice cream girls in hardback with a signed copy making it extra special um, but I think when it comes to the paperback, which is what we're now starting to plan, we're thinking about it in a slightly different way because it's obviously a much lower cost product. And I think we can sell it much more on the amazing story of the book itself. And yes, obviously, if you've read The Ice Cream Girls, you're going to take that from it. But you don't have to have read The Ice Cream Girls. You can read All My Lies Are True and still go back and love The Ice Cream Girls. One does, Reading one after the other does not mean you can never read the ice cream girls because it's all been horribly spoiled um so thinking about that campaign in a very different way again 
pandemic allowing. It's bringing a whole, I mean, that's the other thing I think it's worth saying about marketing is it's never, it is always changing. It's always evolving. There are always new means of advertising. Consumers are behaving in different ways. Um, I think of the job that I did as a marketing assistant back in 2001 and the job our brilliant new marketing assistant who started in July, the job she does now. And yes, some of it is the same, but some of it is very, very different. And her job involves a lot less paper and a lot fewer paper cuts. And I'm very jealous of her. <laughs> Having worked with authors for years, I know that marketing is really important. It's a really important part of the book process. I don't think a lot of people, especially ones who are wanting to write books, realise how integral it is. So at what stage do you get involved with the book? Do you sit in cover meetings and title meetings, acquisition meetings? It could have been literally from that point of acquisition that we've been involved because we, I mean, particularly at Headline, I can't speak for other publishers, but we read very widely before publication. We're reading submissions, we're offering opinions, we're saying really excited about this I think it's a great book I can imagine that we could do this with it I can imagine reaching these readers this is how we might talk to them um, we are helping if it comes to a point which obviously isn't the case for every book but if it comes to the point where we're writing a pitch we are already thinking ahead of campaign ideas if we were to publish that book um, so it is right basically from that point of acquisition we're involved we're not coming in later we're involved in those initial conversations and it's very much a team process we allocate really early we're already talking about allocations for 2022 which seems what does what's that what does that mean so that's who's going to work on what book part of the team um who do we think would be a good fit who's who's got and obviously we have to look at kind of timetables you can't much as you love a book if you've got four books coming out in a month it's not practical to take on another because everything is quite time consuming and to do the best possible job actually you're better off saying I think this would be better sat with that person but maybe I can help maybe I can still be part of the conversation but someone else needs to lead it because there are only so many hours in the day. We do need to sleep. Well, exactly. And just that. so many hours, also so much money and budget because um, authors across the world, I think, are always complaining about how much money is spent on their books, marketing their books, because I think the idea of marketing, in inverted commas, it's very different to what it act the actual reality of it is. I think they think marketing is synonymous with advertising and it's, that's all it's about because there's so much more that goes into marketing a book isn't there than yes you actually see front line I think there's so much more that goes into marketing a book and there's so much more other than advertising and there's advertising that you don't even necessarily pay for and there's things that you can do and work I think it's all very much about making everyone being part of the team the author being part of the team as well and everyone. I know publishers work in different ways, but having those conversations in terms of should it be an author newsletter that is driven by the author, but obviously supported by the publisher and help provided or advice provided. But sometimes authors, sometimes publishers do do the, do the newsletters and stuff for the author and the social media because the author doesn't want to do yes. that. I think, I mean, it's difficult with social media and I think it's, again, as I said, an ever kind of changing thing. I think I worry about social media that isn't authentic to a certain, I think publisher trying to speak as author can only go up to a point because otherwise you lack that kind of personal voice and becomes too advertising focused and eventually you're not going to have the engagement that that needs it's all it will be fine for a bit but sooner or later it's just going to come noise and rather than conversation and I think that's the thing there's so much more than advertising it is about having a conversation and it is about how and working with your our, my publicity colleagues as well it's that classic thing and I'm sure it's got a proper term that someone needs to see something seven times before they'll do anything about it how many times okay. it needs to cement in their head so you're thinking right can they have 
can we make sure their Amazon page looks brilliant or do we run some advertising on Amazon search so they, they see it in a search on Amazon and they hear about it on the radio and then they might see a post about it on Facebook or they might see a quick Insta story from a blogger about it and then they might see a tweet and then oh another newsletter from a I don't know from Waterstones has just popped into their inbox and then finally that's enough of a spurt they think oh I've seen that great bye <laughs> yes and particularly I think the other thing that's worth thinking about there is I mean particularly at the moment because obviously people held things back rather than publishing during lockdown because of the closure of bookshops and retail making things difficult um, there are so many books coming out there's the joke every Thursday this autumn is a super Thursday when normally there'd just be one super Thursday with books publishing for Christmas every Thursday is super Thursday super Thursday means that there's so, so many, many books, books being published because because publishers you you spend a lot of time yeah. looking for quiet time and so just that you can strategizing put your book out and yeah, yeah I think and being making as much noise as possible on that Thursday. on that Thursday because most books the are Thursday. published on Thursday so at the moment mm -hmm. every Thursday it's like not even every other week which is what it used to be isn't it every other week but books came out now it's every week I think it's something 600 new books were published on the 3rd of September 2020 and that's 600 new books on that day, let alone what had come out the Thursday before, the Thursday after. So the competition is so fierce. So I think that's why marketing in every sense, not just advertising, is so important and making sure when things are hitting. And again, it's not just on publication. It's what can you do ahead of publication? When do you do it? What can you do after publication? When do you do it? What are the hotspots? What can we do? How can we time things? How can we time things moving forward to the paperback edition? What are the key moments that we need to hit? And then thinking, Dorothy, I know we're thinking already, aren't we? Right, what do we do in terms of the paperback edition, which is coming out in January 21? And then how do we work that around the next book that will come out in July? next year that's the one thing about marketing we yeah. never know really what the date is what year it is because we're thinking so far ahead that I think I'm already talking calling 2022 next year but it's not it is yeah. still <laughs> technically the year after next but we're thinking that far ahead already it's amazing isn't it back to the whole theme of the best way you know being a happy author for me how I work with with you in the marketing department and I have worked traditionally with other marketing departments is I need to be involved at every stage I know it sounds um strange to people because some people just don't it's not for them they're not interested they want to write their book and they want to see the advertising camp campaign and then that's it and they'll go okay I'll get involved I'll tweet I'll put posts up on Facebook for me I, I like to be involved at every stage so I will send you ideas and you're quite open to ideas and lines that I think and maybe things to do um like the illustrations I did for All My Lies Are True that, that I had made because I thought they were kind of something different a point of difference to what other people were doing so what do you think the best way for people to work with is is it my way or other people's ways or something in the, in the middle no I don't think there is necessarily a best way I think it's just being quite honest about what the best way is and I think it's about I'd always say it's about being collaborative which you absolutely succeed in rather than being critical and making that distinction because actually we all want the best for the book and for the author so that's why it's being collaborative rather than saying why haven't you done this why haven't you done this why haven't you done this I'd far rather someone say oh I suggested this why didn't you do it and then we can talk about it rather than it getting to the point and nothing has been said and like well why haven't you done it and also remembering in the nicest way that actually every book is different and every author is different. And what works for one isn't the magic silver bullet that's going to work for another. Actually, that's the one thing I think we do do is we treat everything differently. One, there's not one uniform marketing rule that applies for every single book because every book is different. Every author is different. 
and you need to think about how best to get to their readers. So what is going to work, even within fiction, what's going to work for one is not going to work for another. Um, so it's thinking about, I think it's more you understand. And actually the, the wonderful thing, actually think about the way we're in compared to when I started is actually the amount of data that's available to feed into that and to get the best possible result. And remembering that you can, I mean, obviously it's going to be difficult for a brand new debut, but there would still be other debuts that you could pull data from and kind of make assumptions from. But particularly for authors like you, Dorothy, who are delivering a book a year and you have brilliant Facebook pages and Google Analytics on their websites, actually we can look at that data and we can look at where people are and how old they are and ask them questions and then use that to inform our campaign. And that's why it's collaborative. I couldn't have got your Google Analytics on your website. And I was very fortunate that for the paperback campaign that we're working towards, you shared that with me and we will use that to inform what we do for the paperback to make sure it's working as hard as it can. Because I think that's the thing, yes, we do have budgets and they can be limited, but you can make those budgets work quite hard. You can kind of strategize with how to make that money work really hard. And so you can drill down and drill down and drill down to make sure that you're getting the money you're spending, you're getting the best possible results. Mm. It's all about optimizing yes. and thinking about it. And I think to a certain extent, testing, testing visuals, testing what might work um, to get the best results. What can people who are readers who are listening to this, because I'm sure there are um, people who don't write books who are listening, what can they do to help with the marketing process? I think one of the most powerful things, Dorothy, you said actually, how is marketing books different to marketing clothes? And actually the one thing that we know so much about books and people have got so much choice and so much choice, not just books aren't just competing with themselves. They're competing with Netflix. They're competing with board games they're competing with people's kind of entertainment and social time in terms of time they're going to devote to reading that book once they have bought it is the power of recommendation so it's is it you tell your friend oh my god I just read this amazing book is it you popping a review on Goodreads so that when someone looks at All My Lies Are True they think wow it's got xxx five star reviews it must be amazing and also I think there is a classic thing as well about recommendation from real people obviously recommendation from newspapers magazines other authors is wonderful and that's still a great tool but a recommendation from someone another reader can be really powerful um, and that's why again another thing that's changed that sits very much across marketing and publicity is the work we do with bloggers and bookstagrammers who are these kind of real readers and the power of recommendation that they can help us with. Um, so that's a very different kind of marketing tool that wouldn't have existed when I started this nearly 20 years ago, something that's come on extraordinarily. I don't know. And it's people, even if they're not a blogger, it's people talking about just as they say on Twitter, I went to the cinema. I mean, people do still go to the cinema, maybe. I went to the cinema and watched such and such, or I've watched this on Netflix. Actually, I read this brilliant book. Um, so I think that's what everyone can do. I want everyone to do is share. That's why I do the job I do, because I love books and I want to share them with people. I'd love for other people to do the same thing. Join a book club, become part of a book club, talk about books with your friends. I have a book club with my, what is now year six mum friends. We started this when we were in year two. And yes, we do talk about the book a bit, but we also talk about a lot of other things. Um, but it's that lovely thing, but we do sit around and chat about books and then we recommend other books. But I think it's just encouraging people to talk about books in the same way as they talk about Bake Off or Strictly or whatever the latest thing on Netflix I'd love books to be as much in the public consciousness as that thank you so much for that Joe. it's been um lovely talking to you and very insightful and interesting no problem thank you Dorothy
Thanks for joining me today on the Happy Author Podcast. I hope my chat with Joe Lydiard, Marketing Director of Headline, inspired you to go out and tell everyone you know about the best books you've ever read. Keep writing, keep reading, keep happy. Talk to you soon. Bye.